The injury bug caught up to them. Not only was Lamar Jackson injured last season, but the defense fell apart down the stretch. Over the Ravens' six-game losing streaks from weeks 13 to 18, they had the worst defensive efficiency in the NFL, generated pressure at the lowest rate in the league at that time. And the six-game losing streak is the Ravens' longest under coach John Harbaugh. So, Dan, the Ravens made a lot of moves this offseason, including keeping some guys on the roster. What are your thoughts on this team going into next season? I have three. I think number one, it starts with Ronnie Stanley. They're really all pro left tackle. How healthy yeah. is he? He's only played seven games in the last two seasons. Hmm. So not only how healthy he is, but how healthy do they believe he is? Because I, I think that's going to impact what they try to do potentially on draft night. Number two is what did Lamar learn yeah. last season? You know, there was that time where they were so decimated by injuries and Lamar had them as the number one seed and he was playing MVP football. And then the wheels fell off. And mm. we, we had talked about him trying to potentially do too much, but he needed to do too much. So kind of what did Lamar learn during that time frame that he could kind of carry over to really make a part of his game moving forward? And I think the third thing, and I would say the, probably the most um, unknown for me, Mina, is – they did not draft Hollywood Brown four years ago to average 11 yards per catch. Ooh. Hollywood Brown had 91 yeah. catches last year for about 1,000 yards. Does he finally emerge as the 15, 16, 17-yard per catch guy to really take this offense to new heights? Yeah, well, along those lines, right, they drafted Rashad Bateman last right. year, which I was a pick that, of course, I loved. I talked about a lot. And he didn't even see the field for weeks. And I think that's a big part of the reason why I have so much confidence in the Ravens this season. I think yeah. they're a sleeping giant, not just because of the additions they made, you know, signings like Marcus Williams at safety, who's an excellent young player, uh, Morgan Moses to man the right side, yes. Michael Pierce on the defensive line, but because they're bringing back half of their dang team. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talked about Ronnie Stanley being injured. You're looking at guys, starters, meaningful contributors, like Marcus, Marcus Peters. Peters. The entire yeah. running backs room was out at one point. Uh, down the stretch, the entire secondary was injured. Football Outsiders has this great statistic called adjusted games loss, where they don't just look at players who were out, uh -oh. but they look at players who were injured and considered whether or not they're starters. By this metric, the Ravens didn't just have the worst injury luck last year. They had the worst injury luck of any team over the last 20 years. Mm, wow. And guys, despite that, they still were in the playoff hunt. So yeah, I'm going to bet on them to bounce back purely because of how unlucky they were last season. Mm. All right, so Marcus, we got a couple Ravens fans here, Dan and Mina. Where do you think the Ravens stand in the division? I believe the Ravens are going to win the division. And I know wow. the Cincinnati Bengals are fresh Ooh. off of a Super Bowl. But I like what Dan and Mina talked about. And, I, and, and this is something that a lot of people didn't think about. We, we talked about the Ravens' injuries. We talked about the individuals that were injured. The difference in the Ravens' injuries, though, is that they had to change scheme because of their injuries. Usually you try to find yes. a guy to plug and play. If you lose a big-time player, you try to – you try to do it by committee or you find a guy that can give you some production. But when you lose all of your running backs and yes. you are the Baltimore Ravens, you have to change the way you go about preparing for games. Lamar has to change the way he plays in games. And I think that's going to come to fruition for them this year. And look, we saw Cincinnati just throttle them from an offensive mm -hmm. standpoint. You ain't throttling the Ravens when they got a full boat in the backfield because you ain't going to have the damn ball enough. <laughs> and I can't wait to see them get back to that and Lamar also be supported by this scheme and also having his guys back in the backfield yeah. as well. I don't think we can stress enough how injured their offensive line was and how much right. that impacted the offense down the stretch. The run game, you know, the absence of the running backs, but also the run blocking, which has been a hallmark, hallmark of this team during Lamar Jackson's stint, was just fell off a cliff. And, and Dan, you know, Lamar really yeah. struggled against yeah. the Blitz uh, yes. when he played last season before getting hurt. Again, it all goes back to the offensive line for me, and I think that's why your point about Ronnie Stanley is a good one. You know, we've talked about the moves that they've made so far this offseason, Matt. They also have the yeah. NFL draft coming up. They pick at number 14. What should they be looking for in this draft specifically? Yeah, I think they could come out of this draft with the best interior offensive lineman in the entire class. Tyler Linderbaugh from Iowa perfectly fits what this team does. Oh, he's a great yeah. run blocker. He's agile. He's tough. He's so physical. Do they have a history of out. drafting good offensive linemen? You told me earlier Iowa? today yeah. they do. They're yeah. good at this, Dan. I've heard there's a guy named Marshall Yonda once. He's a little uh, short-armed, but I don't care because look at him. Clear lanes. We talked about the <laughs> run game they want to do. 6'3", 
63, 300 pounds, excuse me. The agility is off the charts good. He reminds me of Jason Kelsey. Like, that's the type wow. of center wow. he could be in the NFL. Athletically like him? Athletically like him. Zone blocking scheme. Yeah. Mm. Putting linebackers in, in the graves. It's great. You know, um, Marcus and Mina kind of hinted on the defense a little bit. And some yeah. of the, you know, Marcus talked about the injuries and how it affected them somewhat. They also are getting a new defensive, co defensive coordinator. You know, Mike mm -hmm. McDonald, who was there previously. Mike McDonald, yeah. And then he was at the University of Michigan as their defensive coordinator. Now he's back there as their head defensive coordinator. I'll be interested to see do they change anything? Like do they do they go a little bit less right. blitz happy? And I'll be really interested to see yeah. how all those pieces mix up. I think the interest not the interesting thing. Guys, this football team has one of the best players in the NFL, certainly one of the best players at quarterback. They got a guy at tailback in J.K. Dobbins, who I think could be an all-pro. They got one of the best tight ends in football, a plethora of perimeter weapons, some health on the offensive line, a very good defensive line, one of the better young linebackers in the NFL in a top-five secondary. And no one talks about them. I promise you, like, yeah. Buffalo's talking about them. Cincinnati's yeah. talking about them. So I think if Eric DaCosta, their general manager, drafts well, this is a team, and I don't think they're going to win the division as of today. I still rank Cincinnati ahead of them, but I'm not saying they won't win the division if they draft well. I, I agree with Matt's suggestion about them going interior offensive line. I cannot watch more bad snaps with this football team, yeah. by the way. Yes. But I also think they need to consider taking an edge, edge. rush, yeah. an edge rusher, pardon me, relatively high in the draft. This is a team that tried to sign Zedaria Smith. We know that fell apart. Odafe Owe is a young, rising player, but they do need more talent rushing the quarterback. Uh, Matt, quickly, yeah. is there somebody, an edge rusher, that you might target for them? The problem is there's going to be a drop-off. So guys like right. Aiden Hutchison, who we saw, is going to yeah. go first. Trevon Walker is going to go early. Kayvon Thibodeau is going to go early. Jermaine Johnson from Florida State probably going to go early. Johnson. This is where David Ojibwe would be perfect. Coming from Michigan's defensive coordinator, the ACL, or yeah. excuse me, Achilles injury at the pro day probably puts him to late first, early second. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.